Hello everyone, Alta of Wisdom speaking. Today we're continuing our journey. Um, we're going to work on the exporting the, wave, the kick as a wave file, uh, including uh, the click, and we're going to work as well on pitching the kick uh, if you want to do some uh, nice effects, uh, if you want to do kick risers, things like that. So let's get on to it. Okay, shall we start by cleaning up a bit? Um, yeah, I've frozen this version, so uh, I'm gonna copy it and make version 0.3 because now we are heading to something a bit uh, uh, closer to a really usable uh, device. So let's uh, switch this one and switch back to version 0.3. Let's go. Uh, I can open this version and freeze it, and now we can. We have something to work on. Yeah, let's do a bit of cleaning. So I'm gonna uh, do that a bit in fast forward uh, so that uh, you don't get totally <laughs> bored about that. See you in a minute. Okay, so this is this is it. I mean, uh, I've cleaned up a bit, as you can see. Uh, uh, I've zoomed out just a tiny bit, so we see the whole device in one shot. Uh, if I zoom in a bit, uh, go back to the normal. Uh, yeah, that's the regular zoom, 100%. Uh, you see that I've uh, converted most of the cables to uh, square uh, lines. Uh, this is quite easy to do. I mean, if you select a cable, you right click, and you have this align. Uh, message uh, menu which allows you to actually to do do straight things instead of the rounded. I think somehow it's more readable from most of the cables. Uh, sometimes I don't, uh, but here usually it's pretty better. I've color coded a tiny bit. Uh, all these green cables uh, are uh, happening are the triggers to recreate, regenerate the kick when something changes. Uh, as you can see, I've just changed one thing here. Uh, I've added a default low here uh, message uh, because uh, I've noticed that uh, when I was changing uh, typically these values, um, it would trigger the uh, redrawing of the rendered kick. Uh, of this one, of the rendered kick, before actually uh, doing the recording because there was no priority between uh, that cable, uh, this cable, and these ones. So using the default low on this one, make sure that it's uh, slightly late uh, compared to the rest of the bangs, and uh, this way it's uh, this way it's done afterwards. So I'm sure then whatever I'm touching here, uh, the generation happens after that. So I think it's good like like it is now. That's the only uh, that's the only change I've done. Um, I'm noticing as well that uh, I've made a mistake a mistake on this uh, phase thing uh, because uh, I'm using the modulo here. So this is to bring back the phase uh, a bit of my cycle between zero and one. But then I add something on top of it. So I might uh, it might happen that my phase is above one. Uh, it's no big deal. I think that the that cycle uh, doesn't care. I mean, uh, anything which is, I mean, one is wrapped back to zero. Uh, still just uh, checking maybe I should uh, do the opposite. So uh, add here to the, let's do it. That's, that's plus here uh, and plus nothing because that's going to be the phase. And then uh, doing the modulo afterwards. 
so like so and having this added there instead so it's probably uh, it's probably more uh, natural to do it this way and I can widen this so it's a bit cleaner and uh, this is it so that's the first thing um, yeah the defalo I already told you about so just writing down uh, a bit of stuff um, at some point I would have liked to be able to export uh, this uh, the, sorry the generated clip to uh, a slot inside the uh, inside the the live project but I can't figure out a way to do that uh, there is an API which is provided by Max but um, currently I haven't been able to do anything else than just generating MIDI clips uh, I don't think it's possible at the moment to generate an audio clip so what I can do instead is um, provide a way to uh, store the generated kick as a WAV file uh, so you can store it with whether, wherever you want and use it later on so I think that's, uh, most, that's the better way um, so this is something that we'll work on I think in the uh, uh, maybe that's in the buffer normally I should be able to send the message to buffer to write yeah uh, so as you can see um, I can do right flag right row uh, or right wave so probably right wave is what we want to do so um, I'm gonna do that do that later on uh, but we still can uh, just add this message is it will be triggered by something else so right wave so whatever uh, kick you do will be uh, will be uh, will be saved so if I generate just changing anything so to generate it so if I click on right wave then uh, is that it so maybe it's not the go oh, no <laughs> it's not there not connected to the waveform but to the buffer it instead so my rendered kick is somewhere else oh there there it is <laughs> let's move the message there and if I click on that yeah you see I have a message and I can install my kick so my kick dot wave let's put it on the desktop and uh, if I go on the desktop then I can try and open this one in something like Audacity to see how it goes and uh, oh, doesn't work some reason uh, to generate a bug it's crashed it's crashing out the city so something wrong uh, maybe on the general under the export of the file which is a bit weird it shouldn't be uh, let's try again yeah okay Something weird with my my other city, but as you can see, we have the kick here. I can try to play it. Yeah, that's my kick. So I think it's pretty good, uh, like so. Uh, just need to uh, grab an icon somewhere uh, with a with a save uh, save icon. So I think I have something like that. Uh, just figure out where it is. Yeah, I'll grab it from my enveloper I'm pretty sure that this is happening there reuse is a, usually a good point so this is this is the typically the icon I want to use So I'm gonna re 
reusing this thing. Uh, as you can see, the icon is disappearing, as most of the time you have to find it back. Uh, no. Actually, I, actually, I need to point uh, a path to uh, where my SVG files are located so that, uh, I, so that Max can find it. So when my computer um, put the, I've put that in uh, I'm able to use a library and have the SVG directory like so. So now it's going to be probably finding the, the file. Uh, I just need to change this. Oh. Let's remove them and put them again. Yeah, that's enough. And so normally uh, this thing is triggering a message. And this thing will be uh, on top of each other. Um, figure this out. So this is in my presentation. Presentation, and uh, I need to uh, grab them. So as you see, the two of these are on top of each other. I just need to uh, put them somewhere. Uh, which is I export bed button. So if I click there, it's asking me where I want to save my my gig. So I can easily get a get a, a sample out of uh, what I've done. Um, all right then. So that was one point. Um, yeah, there was a question, so I can yeah remove that. This is this has been done already. This has been done as well. This we have done. What we can do, yeah. And the next question is. Uh, should I uh, or not allow repitching my uh, kick? Uh, so by default, as you can see, uh, we have decided not to follow anything with regards to pitch. So we're just playing the kick as it is. Uh, somehow, some users might want to do a kick riser. You know, having the kick which was which is higher or lower. So having the C three, uh, as it's mostly the case uh, when you're doing doing the kicks, but uh, being able to do, to pitch it lower or higher depending on the input node. So. It's probably not a big deal to add that, so we might uh, work on this now. Um, so here we have the note. So instead of using a random stuff, we could use that note. Um, we just need to know what C3 is. So to do that, uh, it's pretty easy. So we can have a live dot numbox. Uh, select uh, as display, select a MIDI note and check what is the value for C3. So 6C3 is not 60 and uh, this would be a reference where we play the kick at normal speed and uh, if we have uh, something which is higher then we'll play faster and if it's slow we'll play uh, slower uh, let's see how we can do that in our uh, uh, thing so the note is actually happening here and the uh, uh, play can be set um yeah oh there is no specific way to uh, read at a given speed in play uh, instead you say i want to go from uh, the beginning from one point in millisecond to another point in millisecond and do that in uh, at a certain in a certain time so if i for example do uh, go from one from zero to one second in 2000 uh, milliseconds, then I'm playing half speed, etc. So uh, it's not very convenient. Uh, so because we need to have the length of our uh, buffer, sorry, that's here. So we have to, we need to have the length of our, our buffer uh, to to do it. Uh, 
it's not very complicated should we do that or switch to something like groove which is another way of playing uh, of, of playing uh, samples which has uh, a way to say uh, to give uh, to give an actual speed and then you have to say uh, yeah you convert to signal and then you set the speed so if I say if I check if I uh, send a zero and then I use one then I'm playing at a normal speed etc uh, shall we do that uh, let's check so that's gonna be groove rendered And uh, when we get uh, our message, so this is uh, now this is telling that the your the voice is uh, is used, and then I'm sending the note. So my note would go there. So it's going to be an integer. Uh, this integer I need to um, uh, figure out how to convert it to a to a speed. Uh, so uh, using probably scale. I'm not sure that if if scale is the right thing, because uh, basically what we want is uh, 60 would uh, behave like uh, one would uh, give us a speed of one, and 72, which is one octave above, would play twice as fast, which makes sense. And uh, 48 would play twice uh, slower, so it's probably a power that we are wanting to use. So we have an expression uh, which will usually be something like power of um, uh, two. It's a, it's another power because uh, between yeah between it's a geom geometrical suite so between one note and the next one the difference is, uh, is this power of uh, two one twelfth that's a bit cumbersome but if you uh, yeah no anyway uh, just need to get that value somehow so whatever it's gonna output and I need to put floats here to get the actual uh, an actual decimal. So this is the difference. And what I want to do is uh, having a power of this thing and uh, and the exponent would be uh, my note. So dollar e1 minus 60, which is the reference uh, C3. Meaning that, uh, yeah. Meaning that uh, if I input six sixty, which is the C three, then uh, it's gonna be zero. So power of this thing uh, of zero will be one, and uh, we can give it a try to that formula and see how it, if it works. So normally, uh, let's just remove that. It's useless now. So let's get above. So if I'm at sixty. I've got one and normally at 72, I got two, yeah, and at 48, I got one half. So that's probably what we want. Uh, so let's use this instead. This is going to be our speed, uh, converting that number to frequency. Uh, so this is. Uh, Yeah, this is all amp. So somehow I think I uh, made, made a mistake because uh, note dollar one, and I'm using the velocity. So it's not what I want. Um, it's not what I want. I need to make sure I'm using the the note, the velocity, and the and the and the pitch as well. So how is it done? Uh, signals on invent, not message. So that's mm, not message. Yeah. So we have the pitch and the velocity. And so this is the second input, which is used. So that's into. Uh, yeah, but that's for MIDI. 
Oh, that's a message sent to a given note. It's not to trigger a note, by the way. Yeah, so maybe just a note with pitch and velocity would be okay. Uh, so we don't need that. And uh, like the note dollar one dollar two would be would allow us to get uh, first element would be the note and second one would be the the velocity. Uh, though we don't actually need the velocity. Um, we still need to uh, deal with this issue about uh, having a way to play several kicks uh, one after the other. But finally, we have only one playing at a time because I just have one voice, so it's, it shouldn't be an issue. So let's try like so. Um, so what I'm getting here instead is, uh, um, is a twofold message. Um, yeah, I'm gonna see how it works. Not sure uh, what we get because here we have uh, different elements. So maybe I need to unpack anyway. Um, let's see what's happening if I just click on this, open the voice, and it's receiving. Select zero. Yeah, and if I send a note. Zero zero. How is it uh, used? Zero zero zero. Yeah, it's sending zero. Is it? It's sending nothing. Um, yeah, I need to think of the, the best way to do so. Maybe we have to. Maybe we have to use a second input. Let's just use a second input for the messages. The first input would be the uh, note uh, dealing with note. So this is input two, and my input one will go to my uh, to my notes. So here I'm gonna unpack my pitch and velocity. And that's the pitch which I which I want here. And I have my formula there. And whatever I do, I need to get to the beginning of my groove uh, before. So I need first to go back to the beginning. Let's check again groove. So I'm going to, to the beginning before doing anything. Uh, and I press play and I think that's it because if I send another note then I will again receive zero so I get back to the beginning and play again but this has to be a signal so I'm going to use the sig uh, object which converts a floating uh, any message a number to a signal because this is what will drive the actual uh, groove and then um, we will have uh, yeah, the render kick, which will be uh, no, not there. So this is our output, and this output will come from the uh, render kick here. I think we're good. So inlet two will deal with uh, configurations and settings. And inlet one will use the the pitch, will be the pitch, so it should be okay. But uh, I have my uh, end of play, which is uh, send here. So normally Groove would as well send us a bang um, when it's over. Loop sync output, so it's not definitely sending a bang out. So I need to uh, know somehow how when Groove has finished playing. So here, as you can see, we have a way to have a bang, but when the loop starts. So this is not what we want. We want to have a bang when the play stop. Uh, this is a bit weird. Yeah, the right outlet is a sync signal ramping from zero at the beginning of the loop up to one at the end. 
So somehow we should be able to detect uh, the end uh, message to make sure that the voice has been uh, ended. But however, uh, as we have added the uh, the uh, note stealing, the voice stealing mode, then even if the voice uh, is still finished and we don't have that message, then it still it will still be uh, interrupted by uh, the next uh, message. So it might not be a big deal. Uh, let's just check without doing anything and see how it goes. seems to work. Let's just uh, get back to having our bass kick at the right uh, octave. Let's shut down the click. Uh, yeah, I can't seem to shut the click down. Yeah, something happening on the click. Click volume is zero. And uh, so I'm playing this and I'm using Click volume, uh, which is actually oh, receiving no data. Yeah, because all my messages, all these messages are not going to the right inlet. They should go there instead. Only the note should get to the first out inlet. Let's try again. It's pretty okay, but I have a weird click, which I can't explain. So that's not all up top. Let's open while you're playing. So we can have a look. That's what's going on exactly. Stop. 
the play message uh, whenever. So probably sending zero end as well. Stop to make sure that it doesn't play. Not sure it changes anything, but still that won't hurt. And uh, of course I need to be able to switch to the reference kick here as well. Whenever I want to. Yeah. So now I can play my reference kick with different speeds. Yeah, there's a click at the beginning of my uh, my own kick, but it's probably bit because of the set my settings. Something I don't have here. Sorry. Something I don't have here is uh, I don't have my click actually uh, on the render kick if I export it because I'm only exported the contents of the uh, of this thing, so it's not merged with the kick which is played. I'm not sure I can do that easily. Uh, um, because I'd probably, yeah, I, pr I would probably need to have a third buffer in which would contain the merge of these two, uh, of these two ones, but uh, at rendered values. So it's not that easy uh, because I don't have any specific way to record that. So I need probably to do a, rec a live recording of this thing, uh, which. I'm not happy with. So maybe uh, I need to do the same kind of thing which I've done for the click and uh, have it generated uh, when I touch the parameters uh, instead. So for now I just let that aside. Uh, of course the click is an interesting part but it's not critical. It's, it can still be added on top of the main kick. Uh, we'll check that later. Uh, just write it down. Uh, for later use. Alright, so let's say that now we have this pitch thing which has been done. It's probably uh, what we wanted. Um, there's a question. Uh, there's a question. Uh, should I uh, keep all this uh, as it is now, as a, de as a device? Uh, so having everything from there, which is uh, okay-ish, but not that convenient to do some fine editing. Or maybe should I uh, do like uh, some of my devices like Auto Glitch, where you have a way to open a floating window and uh, have a big version of the display so you can uh, tweak uh, much uh, easily, much more easily than uh, doing it uh, in the device itself. So this is really, really something I need to think about. It's a bit of work, um, especially just the management of the window, um, because live tend to hide the windows in uh, each time you quit the track, and uh, if you get back to the track, then uh, you don't see your window, your window back. You have to close it and open it again. So somehow the alternative is to have a floating window, which is fixed, uh, which means that even if you go to another track, this window will stay on. But it's also an issue, so I'm gonna think about it, and, uh, and we'll uh, deal with that uh, a bit later. Yeah, I think I found a mistake because um, when I'm uh, monitoring the notes here, uh, of course, 
each knot on will trigger like 60 with the velocity, but any knot off, not off, will trigger like 60 with zero, zero remaining uh, release. So uh, I don't want to play here. What I'm doing is I'm playing again uh, whenever the velocity is zero. So this is not something I want to do. Uh, I want to trigger my kick, and th that's probably why we have this annoying click at the beginning because I'm thinking I'm triggering twice the click, the the my, my kick. So I want to uh, send all this, but only if the velocity is different from zero, different from zero. Um, so we have to um, do something like that. Uh, but uh, be before we do that. Uh, we have to be clever because uh, I want to check this first and then open and only um, yeah not sure it, how in which order the unpack will give us the values so we'll check what it does um, so if I only do this and I use that to open the gate and the gate would be that message. So the message from here would pass only if the velocity is different from zero. Um, we can see, let's have a look at what it does. And if it's working, if it's not, we'll have to use uh, a switch, uh, something which will uh, uh, change the order of this output. And there's a way to do that. Let's hear what it does. Yeah, now I'm just missing uh, some values. But it's definitely not what we want. So I think we have to switch. Um, I think that's the swap position of two numbers, the swap will allow us to actually swap uh, in which order values are sent. Let's move this a bit lower. So I unpack this, I swap the left and right values, and then I need to swap again. So this one will actually go out from the right, the left and left, and this one from the right and left. And uh, now we have exchanged the order in which they are processed. <laughs> it's some uh, techniques, but let's see. Let's see if it does anything. No. We can monitor what's going on here. So that's not it. So it is really what we have to do. I mean, uh, we want to pass that uh, pitch only if it's different, if the velocity is different from zero. So the gate would probably normally would be the, the right uh, thing to use. But maybe we don't need to swap uh, because this one actually goes out first and it's going to be filtered. Uh, so now the our previous uh, order was probably the right one, even though it's a bit weird. But, it, but anyway, it, it didn't work. So we can um, just monitor, we can monitor on using print. So the print message, as I probably already told you, is uh, will go, will send out to the console uh, anything which passes through. So let's just press play and see what it does. Yeah, we got the 69, which is actually not playing. So let's add a play here. So we have as well the incoming messages. Press pause and have a look at this console. So here we have 69 with maximum velocity, which is okay because it's passing uh, 69 with the velocity. But then I have this 68 with zero. 
followed by the 69 with a zero, which is happening later. And that's not good. That's not good because that's not what I'm doing in my uh, in my MIDI messages. 69 will be this way. So my messages are not happening uh, how they how I wanted to I want I would want like with them to how I would want them to happen. Maybe I do maybe I need to do this filtering uh, before even getting to the uh, to the device. So somewhere like here. So we'll have the same kind of uh, construction, but anyway, if, uh, if I do the same kind of construction, then I will have probably the same kind of problem. So as you can see, if I do something like that and uh, so I'm unpacking, uh, I'm packing again, sorry. Yeah, no, anyway, I just need to have that note message because the velocity did I actually use the velocity? Not at all. It's not used, only the pitch. So I only need to get the pitch from here, which would be a suck 8. So pitch goes there, sending a message here, only with the pitch. And the gate is open only if the velocity is different from zero. And hopefully we have something which should work, uh, but there is no unpack whatsoever here. So I'm just using that straight out of here. All this is useless. Let's have a look. We have some notes not happening. just which is weird here yeah, let's yeah we see that the second one is not happening at all so there's definitely definitely something wrong in the way we get uh, we grab the messages from there uh, let's remove all that this as well cleaning up a bit so we send a zero message when we get an actual note so we send back our uh, groove to the beginning with us with a zero speed then we okay we trigger uh, the voice occupied voice busy message and then we send yeah we send the uh, note to the play speed and normally it gets uh, messages out but what happens when we get the second note is probably that the first one is not yet over yeah we can try to experiment uh, let's close the device for now and we can try to experiment what happens if i shorten my kick so my record has finished in the time i'm uh, to the next one There's something wrong. Um, I'm stealing, yeah, but I'm stealing the note, so it should be it should be re-triggering. But my record for some reason doesn't. Um, let's check again the steal message. What it's done? Not much there. So maybe we want to have a look at groove again. And uh, yeah, maybe separate these two ones because uh, I don't like uh, having two things not under control. So first, I want to uh, stop playing when I receive a message and then get back to zero. 
and this is triggered there, which uh, it is much more um, precise than just uh, doing it randomly. I mean, uh, this is like happening almost at the same time, but you never know uh, if actually it does. Oh, anyway, we don't use that anymore. I haven't removed them yet. I still have notes not, not happening. I think. Mm, yeah, I still have notes not happening, not happening definitely. What if I yeah. Seems to work now. Mm. Looks better. Fine. And I think we're okay about playing uh, the kick at the different pitch and uh, making sure that, uh, that everything is properly triggered. Um, so we still need to um, do that thing with the click and if we want to have it rendered. So maybe we have to uh, <laughs> use yeah, anyway, we may have to do the same kind of construction that we've done here for the click. Uh, it's, of course, it's going to be a bit more simple, uh, simpler, because uh, we only have two parameters, so the length and the volume, and uh, we can generate that uh, click instead. But uh, this would be uh, loading the click and having a second buffer, which is the rendered click. And yeah, rendered click uh, would be uh, the size, would be this, uh, the volume, um, this is something, um, yeah, we may, uh, we may do some construct then to merge buffers. Okay, is there a way to merge two buffers within live? Uh, something I can try to do. Yeah, actually we will have to record in the rendered kick, but triggering the, uh, the click in the same time. 
So when we actually trigger all this, we have to trigger as well the uh, play that we have here plus the ADSR. Uh, let's have a look. If I just copy that, put it there, and now I just need to uh, do properly uh, the triggering of this thing so that the sum of all that will go to my recorded uh, kick. So as you see here, we are triggering the recording. So just before that, I need to start playing my, uh, my click. The ADSR. Uh, let's just check how it was used. Click volume goes there. And it's so it's multiplying the ADSR, uh, but uh, it has to be triggered. So uh, my click volume would trigger a message. It would get inside this but we want to trigger the ADSR only when we have uh, the kick, uh, when we have to render like so. So, sorry. Just copying this thing and it's triggered whenever I uh, press record. So I do the start the recorder. So if I put something there, you see my ADSR is updated but it's not triggered because I'm not too touching anything. So if I change something, yeah, I change something then you see that this has been sent and as well uh, it's triggered. And now same for the play, um, if I remember well, play is triggered by one message. So it's probably the same uh, message that we have here again. Oh yeah, that's a one uh, yeah, saying one is not what we want. So maybe I trigger the bank from here and then the one will go from there. So if I change something like the face, then I have my rendered kick. Of course, if I change here, uh, let's put my click volume at maximum and try to change something to see if my click volume actually gets there. So my click volume would as well uh, trigger uh, the redrawing of the, all these two parameters should. Yeah. And my uh, ADSR as well is not updated. So this is my decay. So attack and decay. So this decay goes there. And uh, this actually triggers the redrawing. So if I touch the click or the click and uh, volume or length, then I'm retriggering. And now I should see things changing if I change this. And apparently it's working. So my rendered kick is actually updated when I'm changing the volume of my uh, of my click. So that's what I want. Seemingly. So um, now I can simplify my poly. And for now, we're just removing this thing because it's it would be a duplicate. And because uh, my rendered kick is actually uh, containing both the uh, generated kick and the click on top of it. So we may give it a try and uh, see on an exported kick what it does. So we clearly can hear the, uh, the click. Let's save that. And open it. I think we have the kick, the click. Fine. Uh, 
and this was without I can draw it I can drag it directly to my project and see what it does yeah looks fine we clearly see the the noise at the beginning of our of our kick which correspond to the we can uh, do something like removing the click saving the same and dropping this instead so we have this one and this one so that's exactly the same with and without the click good without and with great uh, so that's it we that was an interesting session uh, with so um, we have finalized uh, most of the things that we want to do on this kick device uh, from a sound uh, perspective. We are, we are able now to export the kick as a WAV file so you can use it wherever you want. And uh, as well, um, we've made it possible to play uh, somehow the, the, the kick using a different pitch uh, based on C3 and then raising or going the, putting the pitch lower. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, it was a nice one for me as well. Um, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to support me a bit, a bit more, then head on to my Patreon uh, so you can, can get this actual version that I'm going to be uh, uploading later today. And uh, in the meantime, have a nice summer. See you guys.